Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. I know by the time you see this, I hopefully will be in dreamland because although I start a new job at like tomorrow night, uh, I picked up an early morning shift because I can, because as I said to somebody, it's not as if I have anybody in my life that I need to worry about. My kids are self sufficient, they look after themselves. My daughter's working, my son does what he does. So at the moment, it's about me. I'm just looking after myself at the moment and with my university studies coming to an end, my student money finishes, so I need to find some money. So I'm just chucking myself into work at the moment and uni. So this is not as if there's anybody in my life. <laughs> anyway, so let's have a look at what happened at the ICAP today because there was some things. Look, ICAP is full of interesting things. So, Senior New South Wales bureaucrat told Daryl Maguire had the ear of the Premier of Glasgow hearing. Whoa. So, remember, she faces ICAP, I think, Friday? I, I know things have changed. I think Maguire faces ICAP tomorrow, Thursday, which is going to be very interesting. A Senior New South Wales bureaucrat told former MP Daryl Maguire had the ear of then Premier of Glasgow hearing as he advocated for a multi-million dollar grant for his electorate for corruption watchdog has heard. The Independent Commission Against Corruption is considering whether Ms. Berendrickman breached public trust in connection to grants awarded in Wagga Wagga due to a potential conflict of interest created by her then secret relationship with Maguire. The, so the Secretary of the Department of Regional New South Wales, Gary Barnes, today recalled there being a particular interest for Ms. Berendrickman their Jiggins office in a $5.5 million grant to the Australian Clay Tiger Association. In 2016, that proposal received conditional approval from a cabinet committee chaired by the then treasurer, Bear Jiggins, who went on to become Premier in 2017. I seem to remember someone in the Deputy Premier's office had told me Daryl was well regarded by the Premier as a person that understood the bush as a liberal party person and that he had the ear of the Premier, Mr Barnes said. Mr Maguire was a strong advocate for projects in his electorate, he said. Mr Barnes agreed the frequency with which staff and officers of the then Deputy Premier John Barillaro and Ms Fair of Dublin asked for updates on the Australian Pay Target Association proposal was atypical. He told the Commission he gave the project priority partly because of the political inflammatory in premature, which with the expenditure of these conditional backing, Mr. Barnes emailed Mr. Gregory's then chief of staff, Sarah Cushion, updates about the project. He said he felt this was warranted due to the particular interest being shown. Under cross examination by Gregory's barrister, Mr. Barnes said the Deputy Premier's office was indicating staff were being hassled by the Premier's office over the progress of the Shin Pub project. I had inferred from that there's no doubt in my mind he, Mr Maguire, potentially could have been ha ha hassling her as well, he said. Mr Barnes agreed he'd never spoken directly with the Premier about whether she had an interest in the project. I thought it was a, particular, a particularly pesky backbencher that was continually following up and demanding information about where things are up to in the project he was particularly committed to. It was generally accepted that Mr McGuire was passionate and dedicated in following up projects in his electorate. The ICAP had previously heard that the conditions for approval of the grant included a satisfactory business case as the original document was considered deficient, which the shooting club had received government funding for its initial business case, but Mr Barnes said proponents were usually expected to fund their own grant applications and this with our meeting. The Office of Regional Development provided $26,950 for the business case to be revisited. Upon revision, the project was found to have met government benefit to cost benchmark to qualify for funding. Ms. Farrah Jigman denied wrongdoing when she resigned at the beginning of this month and said history would show she always acted with integrity. Whoa! Tell me what you think because. I think everybody agrees that we have an issue with the fact that the relationship is not declared. I think that is something everybody agrees on. What we have issues with is whether it's it because of the 
the leaders to correct them. And I guess that um, is, is definitely going to be an interesting thing. So this is very interesting. So <laughs> there are bounty hunters now. So remember, if you uh, have arrived on the case to try and find the million dollar Cleo Smith Award lures bounty hunters to search for four year old. So there's a reward. I mean, I guess if it's going to get her found, I'm not, you know. This Australian Acting Commissioner says a $1 million reward offered for information to find that missing four year old Cleo Smith has attracted bounty hunters to the area where the child was last seen. Cleo disappeared while on a camping trip with her family at the remote low holes campsite about 50 kilometres north of Carnarvon on Western Australia's Gasoline Coast. Her parents awoke to find her missing and the family's tent unzipped to a height the diminutive girl could not have reached. No trace of her has since been found and police say it is likely she's been abducted. Today, Acting Police Commissioner Paul Blanche said the million dollar reward offered by the state government last week has led to a flurry of activity in the Blows Hole area. As you know, a $1 million reward was put out there to help us find Cleo. I think people, whether it's for the money or whether it's just to do the right thing and help find Cleo, people are up there trying to find what happened, he told Nine Radio. I just ask that people don't put themselves into danger doing so. He said police searches of the area found nothing to conclude. She'd simply wandered off, but there was still a lot of land to cover. Acting Commissioner Blank said police remained focused on trying to find a vehicle seen at the campsite about 3 a.m. on the day she was damaged. Officers have been going through footage captured by CCTV along the coastal highway where the vehicle was last seen and in areas to the south. That means CCTV, shops, houses, everything else corroborated what was witnesses' observations of a vehicle at that time on the highway, he said. It's not to say that the person, but certainly driving around at 3am, coming out of there would pick our interest. So Cleo's case was raised in Federal Parliament today, with Home Affairs Minister Karen Andrews saying the government was strengthening laws to give agencies greater scope to act in cases of crimes against children. The AFP and federal agencies will, be, will always be ready to support state work state work of state police forces when it comes to crimes against children and they are currently doing that in the case of four-year-old Cleo Smith who disappeared from her campsite in Western Australia. Our thoughts are with the family and I can assure you, can assure them that the advanced capabilities of federal law enforcement are being deployed to aid local efforts to find Cleo. Opposition leader Anthony Albanese said he supported the efforts of the government to give police more powers to combat crimes against children Along with the rest of the House and the rest of Australia, we want to see Cleo found safely, he told Parliament. Meanwhile, uh, Commissioner Blanche said there was an, said an extensive search of Cleo's family home in Carnarvon carried out by detectives over several hours of standard practice and did not mean that the four year old's parents, mother Alison and stepfather Jake Lindland, were suspects. So forensic investigators arrived at the home shortly after midday on Tuesday and remained there until about 9 30. I must be very clear so people don't make assumptions that is standard practice in any investigation. We must do a thorough investigation. The parents have been nothing but helpful. We've worked closely with them. They've led us into their home. They've led us into their car, their phones, everything. This is a normal part of the investigations. We must follow through thoroughly. Our job is to eliminate everyone who is at the campsite and that is the focus of the investigation at this time. So I guess what they're trying to do is they're also trying to see if there was anyone, I guess, within the family that could have been traced back. So I believe that Cleo's father has been spoken to and eliminated. He was a long, long way away from, from everything. So the last thing I want to look at is good old Katie Joy, because we're going to have a little bit of Katie Joy. And I do talk about her for ages, and then we talk about her for ages, but she got onto the king. Um, to King train today, and she did an Instagram live all about that, I believe. So, Lama Girl, who is a legend, let me just pull up, I'm just going to have a look at some clips from Lama Girl. Um, I didn't have a look at 
like some quick songs that I have posted. And you're going to get my live reactions because I haven't seen them. And, you know, you can actually, if you don't want to watch it, you can actually exit here. You can hit the like button and exit here if you don't want to, if you don't want to see Katie Joy. <laughs> but if you want to see the Katie Joy stuff, um, and you just, you know, you want to see what's happening, then, you know, buckle up the seatbelt, grab your popcorn, and let's go for it. So, ooh, I'm only going to keep random to see because, you know, there's, <laughs> there's quite a few, so we're going to do this. So, as I said, I've got a few big days happening and I've still got some big assignments to do. So, <laughs> I will get there. All right. An hour ago. So, let's have a look. Oh, no. Just going Duggars here. Oh, she explains what a cult is. Okay, so let's find out what is a cult. What is a cult, according to Katie Joy? True. Not all people that have fundamentalist beliefs are cult in a cult. That's not, not true. Yeah, bite means behavior, information, thoughts, and emotions. So you look like, it looks at like, are they controlling your behavior? Are they controlling the information? Like, so high control would be telling you what you can and cannot do, how you can and cannot act. <laughs> Doesn't she say what they can and can't do? <laughs> Doesn't she say what her subscribers can and can't talk about on the screen? The information would be controlling what you can read, what you can listen to, what you can um, what you can talk about on stream, watch, uh, what kinds of things that you can be involved in in terms of like TV programs, social media, websites, uh, radio stations, the kind of, you know, any sort of thing that can give you information. They want to control like whatever information is coming in or coming out. Um, basically telling you how to think about pretty much everything and then how you're supposed to feel. So if you're in a group that's telling you that you need to wear things a certain way, you need to do things a certain way, you can't talk to certain people, you can't listen to certain things, you have to think certain things, you have to dampen your emotions, um, they control your time, they control your finances. They try to limit the amount of information that you have. So they don't. Yeah, and they don't let you talk about anything on, on limit. You have to talk about a certain topic, right? They don't want you to learn about anything outside of it. And they don't want you to listen to anything negative about it. And they try to. <laughs> control what goes in and what goes out like you do that's what she does doesn't she she blocks people that disagree with her oh no all right so someone's about to get blocked watch this all right whoops so someone's about to get blocked see we, she just talked about controlling information they had tracing things what's super annoying is the cat the it has a cat and a pumpkin and i was trying to pop out the part of the pumpkin and part of the pumpkin's like it had a um topper on it like it had the you know whatever the pumpkin top the stem whatever they are that you cut off the vine well when I was popping that part out, it like took that part of the pumpkin pumpkin off. So my pumpkin had no pumpkin top. That bothered me.
I'm not sad or upset. Cover your mouth. That was like, but otherwise they're not hard to do. I don't think. The longest it takes is like, my husband does it different. Like he pokes it out and I'm just like the kind of person where I tape it onto the, to the pumpkin and then I just cut around it and then it creates this like massive mess. And my husband's more deliberate and he'll like pop like with these little pokes so that he can trace it and then he can actually like take it off. But I'm more like I keep it on and then I cut around it and it just gets so messy and I start fighting with it. And then I'm really particular after it's done. So I have to like clean out the back and get rid of all the goop, like the grossness that's in the back, like all of the, the, the insides. The pumpkins are outside. I don't want to go outside. All you have to do is get a stencil. Christmas, please stop asking personal questions. Um, I don't want to answer personal questions. Okay, you're gone. So apparently she wanted to know what her favorite product at Sephora was. Yeah. All right, so now let's have a look at this one. When will the new IVLP content come out? I don't know. Okay, so it's really weird, but I noticed that Gil Bates wasn't at the sleep. I don't think that Bates were at the family conference, and it must have, I bet it had to do with their weddings that were coming up. But, ugh. I'm actually finding myself more and more annoyed anytime I see the Bates post because it's like becoming so opulent and it's so strategic. And it's like, they're posting all of this stuff. It looks very glamorous. They're inviting you to come hang out with them. They want you to join their parties and um, go to the various things and come. You know what's really annoying is there was this video like last year and Gil Bates was telling people to skip their vacations. Like, you don't need to go to Disneyland with your kids. You don't need to go on a, a regular vacation. You can spend your money and come to this. And it's like, he's not sacrificing that. He's going to Italy right now. He's like, his kids are jumping out of planes and they're uh, parachuting into their whatever's they're going on vacation lavishly just their girlfriends everything has become so over the top and so about money with them it's it's like the last few years it's just been insane how money driven everything has become and how over the top it's like um hasn't someone done a whole poll of videos about some poor girl's death It's become so opposite of what you're supposed to espouse with this world. Like they're supposed to be humble and not care about um, outward appearance. They got the money from the show. They're not making memories. Like all of that is designed to attract you. No, they're not making memories. Okay. Here we go. I don't understand why people can't see that. It's to be palatable, to be attractive, to make you think that you want to be with them, to hang out with them, so you can recruit them, so that you can go to their programs, so that you um, will buy their videos and their materials, and you will go listen to them. Duggars have not, as crazy as this sounds, the Duggars are not 
in the same respect as materialistic. They're actually quite the contrary. They have had some of the girls get, you know, some of the things be a little bit like, you know, they did a thing in the plane for like, they, they have planes that they've gotten through the IVLP. So maybe that's like a luxury, but they definitely don't, uh, they're way more frugal. But the baits, it's like so over the top. Okay, so Ginger buying a $300 jacket with her own money in a store, I don't know why that bothers you. You do realize that like jackets like that can easily cost $300. Hmm. A $300 jacket is way different than um, taking their whole family to Italy, and probably proposed to Tiffany. Um, or uh, Nathan took uh, Esther on like a three city tour for her uh, engagement. Yeah, the Duggars, like they have a church wedding, which is super rustic, and then they go home. I think, honestly, um, Oh, wow. This is great. All right, here we go. Let's have a look at this. She lost her job on YouTube. <laughs> Probably the most lit I've seen. And that was pretty basic. They're the kind of people they're the kind of people that they have this money now and they're probably not saving a lot of the money and they're probably spending it super fast. Um, people always think that people always think that like if you have money you're, you need to look like you have money and I feel like it's quite the opposite. I feel like the people that have the most money don't spend money. Like, I have no doubt in my mind that Jim Bob Duggar has stacks of cash just like hoarded away in property because he doesn't spend it on anything except for buying real estate. Even people with new money, not everyone with new money spends money like crazy. I would never want to be in a position where like, if I lost my job on YouTube, for instance, I wouldn't be able to afford my life. That's like, once you get used to a certain standard of living, you have to maintain that standard of living. And I never want to get to that place. <laughs> I don't like I'd rather just live humbly and just be like well if I make money today I make money today and I don't need it for tomorrow that's how I grew up hmm. saver I'm a saver yeah. a lion doesn't tell you it's a lion well there you go she's a saver I am saving I am saving all my money. All right. Um, I forgot to upload pages from that thing you can't do. Okay, let's have a look at this one. They, you're not supposed to use social media, or if you do, you should limit social media. You need to only watch certain types of shows because all the other shows are bad. You can only watch approved content that they recommend, that kind of stuff. Jehovah's Witnesses is our great example. Can't get a fusion. Can't celebrate holidays. A 
I'm not going to like start labeling organizations or groups cults when I literally really don't want, I'm not going to do that. And again, I don't want to paint with a broad brush. So I'm only going to speak to what I know. Anyways, yes, Brie Olson uh, follows me on Twitter. I don't want to answer questions about my own faith that has nothing to do with what I do. Thank you. Come on, you're blocked. <laughs> a lot of them call things worldly. That's actually a common word used a lot. My aunt never, yeah, my boyfriend in high school is a Jehovah's Witness. Uh, did you, the first time he celebrated his Hang birthday on. and Christmas was with me. Hang on, she said, she didn't say was, she said is. Have a listen. She said is. My aunt never, yeah, my boyfriend in high school is a Jehovah's Witness. Shouldn't it be my boyfriend in high school was a Jehovah's Witness? Is she saying she's still with her boyfriend in, in high school? I know, I'm being really picky, really pedantic. The first time he celebrated his birthday and Christmas was with me. And Thanksgiving. And yeah. Like we got him a bunch of presents for Christmas. I don't want to answer questions about my necklaces, but you're well, welcome. But thanks for that. Thanks for asking. <laughs> Um, the pumpkins weren't super hard. <laughs> oh no. All right, I can't do any more. So thank you. Oh, I can't I can't do any more. I don't know what happened to my camera. What's happened to my camera? I've disappeared. <laughs> my camera's gone on strike. Oops, it says it's unplugged. What? Unplugged. <gasps> Hello. <gasps> there I am. No. All right. Yes, I've lost the plot. Yes, I know. I've just had to switch the other camera. It says it's unplugged. I don't know. I don't know what's going on. Thank you for watching. Please make sure you hit that like, subscribe, join the choir if you'd like. You don't have to be able to sing to join the choir. You can hit the give thanks or the share thanks button underneath, which like is a super chat for the for um videos that you watch. But yeah, I will catch you again soon. I don't know. Yeah, I should do. My lives will have to be shorter because I actually have to leave for work at a certain time now so i'll be back at 9 p.m tomorrow night ready uh for to uh yeah i i will have to keep it strictly to the hour because i have to leave time now to get to work i think once i've done the first once i've done a couple of shifts and i know how long it's going to take me and i know what i've got to do i may be able to stretch out a bit longer but i'm going to have to condense them but yes bed won't be keeping me uh it won't be bed that I'll be, uh, you know, it'll be, it'll be for work. So that's going to be really, really interesting. Keep me in your thoughts and prayers because I've still got three, I've got three um, assignments to do. They're really big ones. Um, yes, and I need to work um, to get, you know, to keep the, the, the you know, roof over the head. Um, so some things are happening. Uh, crazy, crazy, crazy life. And uh, yeah, thank you all for watching and I will catch you again soon. Bye for now.